Let's pray with me again. Father, again, we just say thank you. <clears throat> thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for what you're doing in our church. And Lord, just in, it continue to encourage us and build us up in our faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you would, you want to cover your eyes as the lights come back on. You can uh, turn in your chairs so that you can see the front. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity every year that the church allows us just to share. I know it's a little different than a regular service, but I think it's important that you hear uh, from the team members. So I'll go ahead and ask all those who are here. Not everybody who went with us is here today, but if you're here, come on up here and stand. And uh, while they're coming up, I just want to say a thank you to the church um, because you guys have always gone above and beyond of helping um, some individuals uh, raise their money, but then also giving above and beyond that to help us with extra expenses, which is greatly appreciated. Um, we, as you'll see in the video, uh, we'll, we'll share it when, they, when we're done sharing here, we'll see a video because of our mix up in planes and we had to stay over Saturday night on that Saturday, we, <clears throat> we took all the translators and the Honduran medical staff who were with us all week from both teams uh, out to a restaurant, my favorite restaurant, El Patio, my favorite restaurant in the world. I've eaten there more than I have a lot of the restaurants here uh, in town. And WGO is 33 years old. They've been doing this for 33 years. And that's, this is the very first time that a team's been, been able to do that, uh, take these people out. But that was quite expensive, 70 people. Um, and that was because of some of the extra gifts uh, that came in from you, from you that we were able to do that. Also, flying is getting more and more difficult. And uh, there, there used to be on an international flight two free check bags. There are now zero check bags, even on an international flight. And so we take a lot of bags down there, right, with medicines and so forth. So we spent $1,000 in baggage fees. And all of that really was paid for by you guys. <clears throat> it didn't come out of what they had to pay for the trip. It came from you guys. So give yourselves <laughs> a round of applause. <clears throat> God and his sovereignty made sure everything was covered in that. And, and I was not, I, was, I guess I just didn't read my emails close enough. I was not expecting that. Um, that, uh, that expense when I got to the airport kind of caught me off guard a little bit. But I was thankful when I, in my mind, said, well, I know that we had extra money coming in to care for that, to take care of that. So thank you so much. So I want to be quiet. I've asked them all to share about a minute, right? So you can count up how many minutes that is. If you don't want to, that's okay. But if you can share, that would be great. And then we'll watch the video. I'm going to ask Cindy to go first because Cindy contacted me this week. So come on up here, Cindy. Um, Cindy, back when we were in Freedom Middle School, actually when we were on Del Rio Pike, Cindy and her family were members of our church. And then they've been um, down in Spring Hill uh, for a while. But Cindy asked me this week if she could move her membership back to our church. And so, yeah. <clears throat> Now, it's a kind of a membership by, extent, by extension because there's a lot of Sundays uh, she tries to go to church with her grandkids at a new church in Spring Hill that's not yet formalized. Um, and so she goes there and then she has a, a son who's incarcerated in West Tennessee and she goes down there some on, a, on Sundays as well. But I said, sure, just move your membership back. You're at home. She goes with us to Honduras every year. So, you know, welcome, welcome home. All right, so you can. You can go first and then just pass it down the line. I want to go sit down. Okay, okay. First of all, thank you all very much for your love and your support uh, and your prayers while we are in Honduras. And I don't know how I can do this in a minute, but I'll try. Um, it was an amazing week. And many of us, the first night, we had been there before. Last year was my first year to go. And our prayer was where our concern maybe was is that it might be mundane. And then I had to ask forgiveness for that because God doesn't allow anything to be mundane. Um, and so many of us use that word because we had been there before. Probably what I wanna share is Monday. And I worked in evangelism on Monday. And the women, especially the Honduran women are so so strong they have a lot to deal with and in praying with them a lot of times they don't think that some of the things they have to deal with are real big and to me they're huge but as you get to know them and you talk to them you feel their burdens 
and a mother opened up to me about her son who is 13 years old. No tissues again this year. The mother's name is Iris. Her son's name is Michael. She told me that the government had taken her son and he had been gone for 13 days and she didn't know where he was. She also had another son that the gang members were after. So I prayed with her. Our shirts have Billy's name on the back of them. And I missed Billy. But Monday morning I had a visual of Billy and Billy's smile. So Billy was with me on Monday. I had his name written on my hand. And I think because of that, I pray differently. Here at home, my prayers aren't so uh, definite. I don't know what word to use. But when I looked at that mom, I said, well, as a mom myself, I can't imagine. And I prayed in a Billy-style prayer that Michael not only be returned, but he be returned that day said, Lord, return him home today. He had been gone 13 days. We were at this church Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday morning, Iris comes running into the church. And she only knew me by the name Mama, I guess because I said as a mom. She comes running to me, Mama, Mama. And I was shampooing children's hair and children's she said, this is my son, Michael. <laughs> God still performs miracles. And what I learned, I, and I poured concrete, I did lots of different things in Honduras, but what I learned is God still performs miracles, and we need to just always go to him in prayer and be specific and he'll, he'll take care of our needs. Um, so again, thank you all for your prayers and your support and, uh, and just, just your love. Thanks. This was my first time to go and uh, the rest of my family had been before, but um, so it was very special. I'm gonna cry too because she got me started. But anyway, um, it was very special that all four of us were there. Our son Nick was also there with us, and Audrey and Mike. And um, and as a mom, that was a very <laughs> thank you. That was a very special week. That I know that we will always remember that we had together. And just getting to um, experience and minister together was great. Um, and the thing the thing that I took away that may be different from everybody else. I don't know. Maybe maybe you've all experienced this too, but. I was struck by how much the people there love our pastor. And um, one, of the, one of the interpreters that was with us even told me one day, she said, your team is special. And I know that's just because Kevin just, he loves, he loves the people, he loves the interpreters, and they see him and they love our church. And so I was very proud to be a part as a member of our church. And um, also a thing I really enjoyed was just getting to work with all these people because as this church, we don't have our own church building. We don't get to do a lot of things together, but getting to do those things with these wonderful people was like a highlight. So that was what I took away. There you go, Audrey, sorry. Okay, well, this was my second time to go. And as most of you know, I got sick the night before we had to leave to come back to the States. So thank you guys for praying for me on Sunday. Um, it really made a difference because I didn't get sick the whole way home. So that was just truly a God thing. And I know it was because you guys prayed for me. So that, thank you. Um, so like my mom said, we all got to go together, my whole family with this team. And that was a really special thing. Um, and also, I guess my takeaway was about evangelism because my first year there, evangelism was really scary and I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible. 
Um, I just, you know, Satan really knows how to get you to where you're too scared and you, he just locks you in where you can't really do, well, you can, but you, you kind of put yourself in this box where you can't really do what God wants you to do because you're too scared or a variety of factors. But this time, I, I just prayed that the Lord would just use me and I, that he would take care of everything and that he would give me the strength and the confidence in him. And it made all the difference in the world. So, because I sat down and, yeah, I mean, it was a little nerve-wracking because it always might be, you know, maybe it won't ever be easy. But um, he just told me just to talk and listen and share. And I was able to do that with my translator. She helped me out, too, a lot. And um, it was just, it came much more naturally because I was just trying to trust in the Lord. And he just... I don't know. It's not as hard as we make it out to be just to share what Jesus has done in our lives and just to listen because people, a lot of people just want you to listen to them. So that was my big takeaway, I guess. It was a blessing being with our, our whole immediate family, but it was a, it was a blessing to be with this, this church family. Um, on your newsletter, the bottom there, you see a picture of me and a Honduran. Well, he's actually, he grew up in, in LA, but his name is Roberto. He was our, our group leader. And, you know, we say that that God, we say he's a big God, and I think he continually wants to, us to understand really how big he is. Kevin, sometimes he calls me a prophecy magnet because if there's anybody that's prophesying around, you know, when I'm with Kevin, they've got a word for me, and I don't know if that's because I really need to hear some extra stuff or I'm not, I'm not paying as much attention to my Bible as I need to be, but Kevin, Kevin says that. So I was talking to Roberto just probably just before this picture was taken. We were having a really deep conversation, and God told me, through Roberto exactly what I needed to hear. He doesn't, Roberto, I've been with him. This is my third time with, with WGO. So he is, he was our interpreter the first two times I went down and he was our group leader this time. So he just barely knows me, but he was obedient to God, had a word for me. He didn't say, he didn't say, Mike, I've got this word to God for you. He didn't say that at all. He didn't know, as a matter of fact. Later, I went back and told him, I was like, what we were talking about, what you told me, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Thank you for that. And he goes, hey, brother, you know, I've, I've, learned, I've, I've heard God from many things. I've heard God from children. I've heard God from people I don't know. I've heard God from, from animals. And, and so I, I want to be that way. Roberto, was a, was, he's, a, he's a great guy. And pray with me. Pray with me. You see his picture there. Pray with me. I, somehow I want to get him to the United States, him and his family, his wife and daughter. He's got family in L.A., but I want to bring him here and hang out with us and, and get him to L.A. for a little while and then, you know, send him back home. But not, you know, not necessarily in that order. But anyway, uh, God is a big God, and I'm just grateful that he, he cares enough about me to even have a word for me down in Honduras through somebody that I barely knew. So to God be the glory for, for everything that he did for us. This was my second year as well. Um, last year I was extremely nervous and didn't want to get a stomach bug and so I probably didn't enjoy it as much as I did this year. This year I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I had fun and I hate to say I had fun on a mission trip but I did um, and of course getting to work with all of these was really special. Um, the, my first highlight came on day one when I got to see the lady that I talked about last year that Luis had helped me pray over. Um, I wanted to go back to that church and I prayed and asked God if there would be any way possible if we could go back to that church, but I knew that it probably wasn't going to happen because Freddie said that doesn't happen. We don't go back to churches twice usually. So anyway, I had prayed about that and I thought, well, if I don't get to go back to that church, maybe I could see her somehow. Somehow maybe she'll show up at a brigade. So I asked Kevin, I said, do you think we're going to be going to that church? He said, I don't think so, but we did. And so I got to see her on day one when we went to church there and I got to see her on Monday and we got to talk. She was looking for a translator this time because she wanted to tell me a lot of stuff. So she found her Luis and, and she got to talk through him. So that was special. And then, um, I mean, there's something from every day, but um, a little boy when we were working children's and again, I'm going to cry, but got to work with Macy and Deanna and Audrey. And so that was really great to just work as moms and daughters and children's and this little boy, he came bouncing in and he was chit-chatting with all of us and he just had lots to say. And so I just started talking back to him like, oh, really? Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, I can't believe that. And he thought we were carrying on a conversation. I didn't know what he was saying. He didn't know what I was saying. But later he ran out in the church and he came back and he got my hand and took me to meet his parents. 
that was wonderful because I thought, wow, you know, he, he wanted to show me off. <laughs> um, but then every day had something special. I, I will say in evangelism, I channeled Billy as well and just thought, you know, boldness. What do I have to lose? I'm in a foreign country. They don't know me. Um, I wish I had that boldness here, though. I do. I wish I had that oomph to, to share Christ like I did in Honduras. Um, but that was, that was an awesome experience in evangelism. And then when we got back home, um, we got back home Sunday and Monday I was going to work and I got up and just having a little quiet time and I thought, you know, I don't even want to go to work today. I want to go to Natchez. I want to go to Acton Street. I want to go hang out with those people. I want, I want to be the hands and feet of Jesus more. What can I do? I don't want to go to work. Um, but I got to work and quickly just got immersed back into work and was helping some people and realized I don't have to be in Honduras and I don't have to be on Acton Street. I can be at Spring Station Middle School in Spring Hill, Tennessee and still serve. And, and I wish that I saw those opportunities more. So that's my, my takeaway for the year is to try and see those opportunities and seize them. Well, what, uh, what Audrey didn't tell you is she got sick the last night and in Honduras, if you show up at the airport sick, they will not let you board a plane. So that was really critical that she got to feeling better and God blessed in his timing and she was able to get on a plane. Roberto that Mike talks about has a burden for kids in his neighborhood. It's a very um, impoverished neighborhood. He's actually building what we would call a lean-to on the side of his house and is furnishing that with a little stove and actually feeds all the children in his neighborhood that otherwise wouldn't get food. So, um, you know, God blesses in a mighty way. He started the week out Saturday morning, 4 a.m. at the airport, and he gives us this guy out there, and we pull all these crates up, and this guy says, I can take care of all that for you right here. You don't have to drag it inside. I got it. But the little surprise was is that we had to pay for it all. Um, so for those of you who contributed, not only did you bless in that way for us to get everything to Honduras that needed to get there. Otherwise, some stuff probably would have been left here. But the way that your hearts extended and reached the people there in so many ways, I wish that you could see it, feel it, experience it, and I hope that God has blessed you somehow um, while we were there. Um, our team has a great heart. We pitched in every day about $60, and we were able to buy lunch for the translators every day. Um, a little bit of break for them. The Mission House, they make a ham and cheese sandwich, and it looks like it has mustard and mayonnaise mixed on it. And they make them the night before, so they sit in a refrigerator overnight. They get soggy. Um, you know, first world problem. We want something a little bit better. You're right. <laughs> but, but that's what we get for lunch each day. We take it. And, um, and, and the translators and workers, they get the same thing in the Mission House supplies enough for them. Uh, on Thursday, um, because we were buying lunch each day for the translators, the translator said, we're going to give our lunches to the church collaborators. Each church has a group of people that volunteer to come in and help serve also. So by doing that, that church was preparing a meal for the collaborators. Well, the WGO workers got to buy a lunch and give their sandwiches to the church collaborators. The church had all this food, and there was, I don't know, 150, 200 people in line outside the church waiting to get in. So not only did all of us get to eat, but all of those people in line got to eat. And not only did they get to eat, but some of them were actually carrying plates of rice back home to their family. So you talk about two fishes and five loaves, that was that experience that day. God is still mighty. He does bless. And um, I wish I seen that here in America, and I'm sure it does, but there's just so much going on to where we don't notice it as much. But miracles still do happen, and thank you all for your hearts. Okay, well, this was my fifth year going, and it was one of my favorite years because, again, I got to be with my mom and my dad. 
Um, one of the best experiences was Tuesday. Uh, my friend Abby, she's from where I go to school, and my dad, we got to paint um, this lady's living room. <clears throat> and Cesar had taken us to like paint it because she's been in his church, and her testimony was one of my favorite parts. She talked about how she was really high up in MS-13 gang and how she was paralyzed, and then Cesar came and prayed over her, and now she's walking. And um, she just had this whole testimony about how her family was hungry and how Carlos brought them exactly what she told her family to envision they were eating. And so it was just really cool to hear how no matter where we're at in our lives or what we've been going through, like God still loves us and he still brings us out of it. Uh, this was my sixth trip. And every trip is special in its own way, but this one uh, really, the team, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice, it's really reassuring to know that you have a really strong church family when you're down there. I didn't go last year, which was really weird for me because I had gone every year since 2011, but last year I didn't go, so it was just, when I went this year, it, it's like I had never left. It felt like I, it was just the next year and I was down there and it was really special. And uh, what, one of my favorite moments was Hayden and I were kind of joking on Thursday, we were doing concrete with uh, Audrey and Abby and we're kind of joking like, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll do all the work. But uh, Audrey and Abby, they, they put us to work, you know, they, they put us to shame, you know, they, they were carrying buckets, you know, uh, mixing concrete, and Hayden and I were just over there hunched over breathing, like, <laughs> and Audrey and Abby were just going to work. So it's always, it's always good to see uh, first timers, and this was Audrey's first time doing concrete, and she was kind of, you know, nervous about it, but she, she and Abby really stood up, and uh, it was just really, really nice. Thank you. you guys can be seated. Good job. Good job. <clears throat> this was a special year in the fact that it was our 10th year as a church, 10th uh, year in a row going, and that's hard to believe that it's been that long. And uh, when we started going, the decision was made that if, we, if we're going to do a mission trip every year, let's go to the same place using the same people, not necessarily the same church, but we've been to a lot of the churches. But... Um, but to do that and build relationships with, um, with the people in Honduras. And <laughs> we've done that pretty well. Um, the Honduran staff love us. <laughs> um, the, uh, the churches, um, there's about 200 churches associated with WGO. So they do brigades almost every week of the year. And, uh, and so it takes a while sometimes to go back to another church unless the church asks you back. And most every church that we go to wants us to come back. But, um, and then because I've been able to go uh, last three or four years, three times a year, out of those 200 churches, I've probably been in over 100 churches of those 200. And then with the pastor's conferences, uh, have met most every pastor that uh, is associated with it. So our church does have a special place um, in in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, and with World Gospel Outreach and relationships, you know, 10 years of relationships. And so you've met some of those people. Miguel was here back in November. Of course, Luis Carrion has been here. I do think in the future, Roberto will be here with us. Um, Cesar, who's my favorite translator, is hopefully he'll be with us sometime as they come through the States for different things. Um, and so just those relationships are dear. So we got a video. And um, so we'll get the lights and pay attention to the video, um, especially as we get near the end. You'll see one place where it talks about our lunch with the translators. And there's two shots of the grill. Just all that food on the grill was for us. So lots of food. But anyway, it makes me hungry thinking about it. So anyway, so get your popcorn out and enjoy the, the video.
Jesus is the worthy Lamb of God. Bueno, primero Dios le bendiga. She say God bless. 
Eh, yo les estoy agradecida, va porque han pensado en nosotros. Thank you so much because you're thinking in my family. Gracias y que Dios les bendiga. Thank you and God bless you again. Y que um, Dios mande ángeles que acampen alrededor de cada uno de ustedes. And God is come to angels to a camp to may, may God all send you. angels Angel, all to around, to you. around you yes. to protect you uh, yes. and thank you for help mm. okay how dare you lift your hands in this building and open your mouth and worship a great God clapping is easy but can you open your mouth and say We miss Billy. Honduras, um, if you know Billy, you know that it changed his life. He was a different person after going. He went three years in a row and was planning on going the fourth year. So, um, if you want your life changed, uh, go with us next year. Um, most of the people up here who shared have been, some of them multiple times. Fred has been all 10 years. And um, my challenge is, and I've thought about this, and I want to say this with, with grace um, as much as I can, uh, 10 years is not a generation, but we need a new generation of people to go with us. Um, so if you've never been before, the challenge is really um, go with us next year. I would love to have all new people who've never gone before. And uh, now some of you who've gone before, you can still go, but I would really like to have people who tell me every year, I want to go next year, I want to go next year, and then for different reasons, and I know things happen, and you've got to be called to this, I know, but. Uh, really think about that. Um, June, 6, June 16th through 23rd, I think. It might be June 23rd to June 30th. Depends on when they start. We're the 25th team every year. We're team 25. And so however they start counting the weeks, it'll either be June 16th to 23rd or 23rd to uh, 30th. And, uh, and it's quite possible this next year might be kind of interesting. The week before us, um, the church that I was a pastor at in Arkansas who introduced me to WGO was there. And the first time they had been there since I left Arkansas, they quit going uh, from that. But they came back, and they want to go um, <clears throat> with us next year, where, whereas we would have our own team because there's two teams in the mission house, so it would be Team A and Team B. But that could be an incredible week because we would, we, there would be relationships from both, uh, from both teams going there. So next, next, year, uh, next year, 
promises to be a special year. But this year it was about $2,000. You can start now. You can give any time toward that, and we just put it in a savings account and uh, pay for it. The first round of deposits will be in December uh, like they usually are. But uh, really think about it. Don't let the money stop you. Billy could tell you how uh, God intervened and supplied every year that he wanted to go. Um, Billy was able to uh, raise the funds uh, necessary and uh, had the funding every time he wanted to go. So we can help you with that. Uh, so do consider that. There is a sign up on the back table. It's, I forgot to make one, so it's, it's really, really fancy. It says Honduras 2018. Uh, but just uh, if you're interested in going, put your name down and uh, let's talk about it and uh, make uh, next year a great year with some people who have never been uh, to go and just experience what, uh, what we've experienced over the last uh, 10 years uh, from that. All right, but again, the trip was in memory of, uh, of Billy this year, so it's on the back of the team, of the team member's shirts. And even the people down there, they were like, they were like where is the big black man? And I'm like, well, uh, he's in heaven. <laughs> That's where he is. So, so, uh, but they loved him uh, down there as well. So anyway, so thank you for indulging us today, and I hope that you found some type of inspiration uh, from all of this. So let, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, and we do love you, Lord. And again, we thank you for how you've supplied the needs that we have so that we can go and, and minister, uh, but then also come back with a, a heart to minister around us. And, and uh, Lord, I thank you for the testimonies I've heard of that where different people have said that they go to Honduras and they come back and they see things differently here. And, and Lord, we say that every year, that if you don't see the needs around you in your own community more after going to Honduras than you've wasted your time going to Honduras. The reason for going is to open up your eyes so that you can see the needs around you every day. And so help us just to continue to pour into our own community and our own families. Uh, but then, Lord, also to provide us opportunities to go and see uh, life from a different perspective in another part of the world. And so, Lord, we love you. And again, we just give you this day. Thank you so much for your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Book of Revelation, uh -huh. chapter 7, verses 16 and 17.